Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Steven Inks. Today we're going to be talking about a pen that I've actually wanted to own for a while. It's um, from a brand that I really like and appreciate, but a bit more expensive than I would normally buy. I uh, went ahead and got one for myself though, and this is uh, this video is going to be about the Caveco Lilliput. Look how small it is. It's a tiny, tiny pen. Um, is it too tiny? Well, we're going to have to see. So, uh, Stick around, watch me take it apart, watch me put it back together, watch me use it to make some art, and we're gonna see what we think of this little tiny, tiny pen. All right, let's start off with the good stuff. Here is the box that it comes in. You can see we've got Caveco, Germany, since 1883. It's a little cardboard sleeve. There's an address. There's a... Uh, uh, your web, web address, excuse me. It does say box made in China. To my understanding, the pen ha itself, however, is made in Germany. Um, come on, Kaveco, just make the box too. Anyway, uh, we're going to pull this out. And once again, I am very um, pleased with this tin. I'm very excited to finally own one of these. I've seen that their pens sometimes come in these cases. It's beautiful embossing um, picture of it looks like a picture of the uh, sport maybe over here um, and it says Caveco license to write oh and then here we go yep it still says box made in China so I think they mean this box but it's a really cool tin and inside there are more treasures. Okay, um, there's a sticker, and that's cool. I do something with that. Um, and there's a, there's a pen underneath here. Awesome. The history of uh, the Caveco company. It does appear to be in German. Interesting. Yeah, there, the whole thing's in German. Uh, and then they have a bunch of little diagrams. I kind of like these diagrams of all the different pens that they make and what, how you, um, how you use them. So that's fun. All right. Um, and here is the pen. Now I've already been looking at this. I haven't filmed this video yet. Right, I'm filming it right now. In case you didn't know, um, but I I did notice this pen before and. I gotta say, it is way smaller than I was expecting it to be. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. So just for reference, this is the Caveco Sport. And then um, here's the uh, other brass pen that I have reviewed on this channel that I really like. This is the Delike um, slash Moonman slash Mahjong or whoever makes this. I don't know. Those names are so hard to follow. They keep changing. Um, I really do like this pen uh, and I thought it would be more along the lines of this. I almost feel like I owe the manufacturers of this pen an apology because I did once call it a ripoff of this pen, but seeing the size difference, the diameter difference, um, I don't know. I guess it's its own thing. Uh, so interesting, interesting. My question is gonna be, is it too small? I'm gonna have a look at the insides of it. Um, twists off. This is a gorgeous looking pen. Of course, it's made to post. It's a pocket pen. So um, I do find this to be a very beautiful pen. And I just want to point something out. This is a pen nib that I've never had before. Uh, when I ordered this, and you could see I said that the packaging was all in German, um, the listing on, on Amazon was in German as well. And I did not know this, but I was ordering a double broad nib, which is insane. I've never owned a pen nib like that before. I don't know, even know how that would write, much less draw. I do want, I did end up not returning it because I felt like um, I just know a little bit about Amazon's return policies and, you know, not to uh, bite the hand that feeds me because I, um, 
I do often have uh, affiliate links in my videos towards, sometimes towards Amazon. Um, that they're not very kind to their returnees, especially for third-party shops. So I didn't want some poor little pen shop, uh, I'm guessing, I guess in Germany, uh, to pay the cost for the mistake that I made, it was just that I m did not read the pen listing correctly because it was in German, um, and I ended up getting a double broad nib. So what I did do is I ordered another nib unit, and I will save this double broad nib for a different review, but I'd like to have some consistency. I just want to point out this pen does not have a roll stop, so uh, the other pen is going to be my roll stop. Um, for consistency, I'm going to go with the extra fine, which I normally use. This will be my first extra fine from Caveco because the uh, Sport comes in fine, but if you order it, now I got this gold tone. I think that's going to be really nice with the Sport. So if you have never done this before, these are threaded inserts. So you grasp the pen right at the nib, twist, pull it out, and then we're going to get the other one. And same deal, put it in, twist, and there it is. All right, I do like the gold colored um, metal along with the brass. It's uh, pretty, it's shiny, it's interesting. Um, did not come with a, um, with a converter, but we did get a Caveco uh, ink nib. Interesting, they always seem to send blue. I don't know if there's a reason for that, um, but uh, I noticed that with my two sports that I've owned, they came with a blue. I do want to show you guys something that makes me a little bit sad, is that I bought this converter. Caveco makes these little tiny push converters and they go inside of the sport really well. And um, I thought that this would go inside of my, my Lilliput, but uh, if I pull the plunger all the way back, of course it, it connects because it's a standard international converter. But if I put it in, we get to about here. And then that's getting pushed in. So unfortunately, this pen will not take the Caveco Mini Converter, which makes me feel a little bit sad because I really like that converter. And what I'm probably going to have to do is um, I'm going to have to grab the um, converter off of this one right here, the squeezy converter. And that's going to have to go in my Caveco, which means that my Sport can have the... Uh, the converter that I really like. Seems a shame. Um, oh, interesting. It's too wide. Oh my gosh, this thing is so little. It literally, this little metal collar right here, it doesn't, it doesn't go in. So I guess my only option, and once again, this is pretty disappointing for a pen at this price range. They didn't think that someone was gonna wanna put a converter inside it. I have to use the cartridge, and I guess I'll be just refilling this cartridge as um, as it runs out. So um, yeah, that's a shame. That's that's disappointing, uh, and it's all due to the fact that it's just so small that it doesn't fit anything in there. So okay, um, I guess that's the ink fill portion of this video. This is all I can do. I'm gonna screw that on, and. Now when I hold this in my hand, I do also notice that these threads right here are pretty sharp. So if I'm trying to hold right here, that could be uncomfortable, especially for this hand that's resting on the side there. But this one, uh, this is the comfortable spot to hold it. And it's really the only comfortable spot because if I pull back on the arm of the um, pen or the on the body here to do like a longer stroke, then I'm resting up on this part of my hand, and that's, that's gonna be uncomfortable. So it has to be held right here. You have to use a converter, and you have to post it. So this pen is forcing me in a lot of ways to do things that I may or may not wanna do. Something worth noting. Um, 
but that's that's the basics of it. So we're we're gonna um, get some paper out. And we're gonna see how this thing writes. All right. So here we go with uh, some line testing. Um, all right. It seems to be smooth and flow well. The forward writing is what I would expect an extra fine to be. Typical Western extra fine would be something like if you had a pen like a Platinum or a Pilot, what their fine looks like. The Pilot Metropolitan comes in fine, um, is most likely what you'll get. And then the, the uh, Pilot Kakuno or the, uh, the Platinum Preppy, it's going to give you that kind of, uh, this is an extra fine in Germany. It's going to be a more of a fine in, um, in kind of Japanese pen world. We'll look and see what the reverse writing looks like. Reverse writing is slightly thinner, but it's scratchy. I guess I could smooth that out a little bit if I wanted to. Um, not a bad cost for a, uh, for a nib, um, for a nib unit. It cost me about $25. You know, that's about the cost of a, of a brand new pen. In some cases, even this, uh, brass pen right here, I think this cost me about maybe less than that. And to be honest, it has less downsides than this, um, Lilliput. I still do love the way that it looks. It feels all right, and it is smooth. So there's all those things going for it. At the same time, there's a lot going against it. I'm actually surprised that this is what we end up with. So looking at some 3D shapes. Yeah, it keeps up nicely. The extra fine gives it a bit of toothiness. So if you like that little bit of toothiness going with your pen, especially if you're from a world um, like the dip pen world, you're gonna miss scratchiness when you got a pen that runs like glass, you know? So that's this, it's got a little bit of tooth to it. And you can go over the lines and, and you'll get um, a darker line, which is nice. That's, some pens have no, have no um, give at all to their tines. Ooh, this is really, I gotta admit, I am getting a little bit into it and I just pulled back like I said you shouldn't do right here, and it was comfortable enough. I just squeezed my hand in a little bit. So uh, when you're working with it, I don't find that it's as uncomfortable as I suspected it might be when I was going through the basic parts and features. So do with that what you will. Well, I still have a whole entire drawing to do with this pen, so I'll give you more feedback, pun intended, on how that is uh, when we do the drawing part. And then I'm gonna get this square right here. I guess when I do these drawings, I, I don't think of them as being on the same physical plane, which is um, probably jarring and confusing for people who are uh, very detail-oriented. I, I admit that even though I'm an artist, I'm not as detail-oriented as I would like to be. I do tend to just um, let the drawing be the drawing. It's helped me a lot with managing my stress around drawing, but it might not make the prettiest drawings all the time. Well. That's why I review pens on this channel instead of just drawing, because I'm trying to give you guys something valuable for your time. Um, hopefully the drawings aren't too bad. Here we go. And um, this is kind of what we get here. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with the experience of using the pen as opposed to uh, all the stuff that came up problem-wise. Problem um, but this is what it is. And I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of art advice moving forward and my art advice is this 
jump genres and media types for inspiration. All right, so this reminds me of a friend of mine that I knew in college. When I was in college, I was a film student. And I, yes, I, I actually end up using it for this channel, a lot of the skills that I learned. But up until that point, I pretty much didn't use that. I ended up doing something completely different with my life, which is fine. Something that you can do after college. You're allowed to. You're free to do it. Um, and my friend, so ironically, was studying to be a teacher. And I think that she still is a teacher. Um, was a really great singer-songwriter. She played guitar, did this kind of folksy stuff. And her inspiration came from movies. Which is interesting because when I created my film projects, a lot of my inspiration came from music that I liked. So when I wrote something, I was listening to music. When I um, thought about how a story might be, I was thinking about music and musical cues. And so both of us drew inspiration from things outside of what we create because um, obviously that's the thing that impressed us the most. Um, yeah, I hope she's doing great with her life and... Um, I hope that you would consider looking to things that you don't create from to build into the things that you do create from. It's kind of a weird bit of advice, but uh, there we go. We are going to draw with this pen right now. So I think that I have a pretty open mind when it comes to pens. I like pens that are different from each other, pens that... Um, don't behave like the other pens that I already own because what's the point of owning a new thing, right? If it looks just like the old thing that you own. But I gotta say, this is a real challenge for me to recommend this one uh, because of all the constraints I talked about just when looking at it and feeling it and how it is in my hand. Uh, to be fair, I was able to do this drawing pretty well and I thought it worked fine. Um, but the comfort issue uh, definitely came up and it's just the fact that I was able to find a way to hold it comfortably doesn't mean that you will be able to find a way to hold it comfortably um, the the size is just too small for me I probably gonna get roasted in the comments for this because it is called the lily put and the idea is that it's small it just went too far for me so um, I don't know I hope that uh, that this pen finds its audience. I mean, I'm sure that it kind of has found its audience. It's been around for quite a while. Um, but if you have, you know, hands that are medium to large size, or if you hold your pen in, in a unique way, um, I think that this pen will probably be uncomfortable for you. And uh, one of the things that I'm noticing as I build more reviews of pens and check out more different things um, is really just that uh, there's so many good things out there that it's important for someone to say when a thing is not so good. So for me, um, I do like this pen, but I don't think that uh, it's one that I highly recommend when there's so many other things out there that I actually do think are kind of great. So um, hey, if you own this pen, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, this is the best that I could come up with. My final thoughts on this pen, um, I do have misgivings about the design. I feel like it's just a hair too small. I imagined it would be a small pen, but having owned the Caveco Sport, which is a, a small pen um, as well, a pocket pen, this is a little bit bigger. Uh, I kind of thought that it would be more like that, more along the lines of that, but just in a metal kind of uh, format, but it's very small. That being said, it was comfortable to use for me, and it is very well made. It's got nice flow, it's very consistent, it puts down good lines, um, and Caveco obviously offers a lot of support with lots of um, different nib sizes that you can buy the units for. It's nice to have a brand that uh, has been making the same thing for literally uh, decades and I don't know how how old the the um, Lilliput is as a design but maybe even more than a century because they've been around forever so there's a little bit of uh, believability for the brand when it comes to that so that's a good thing um, I think if you're looking at this pen and you think I really want a super small pen like that you should go for it 
it's um, it's definitely not disappointment in that area for myself. I just wish it was a little bit bigger. I wish they accommodated my Kveco um, push converter, which is one of my favorite converters, and I bought one especially for this pen, and it doesn't work. So I'm a little disappointed with that part. That being said, I do like this pen. I'll probably be pulling it out from time to time to use, and definitely look forward to... Um, the video where I explore the double broad nib that I ordered on accident. So um, happy little accidents, as they say. Well, that does it for this video. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, leave your comments below. Is it too small? You tell me. Yes, it's too small. Uh, please check out um, my my website, stephenings.com, where you can download a free copy of my book, What Kind of Pen Is That? And also, like and subscribe and help this channel grow if you appreciated this video and you want to see more like it. I'll catch you on the next one.